Hi, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Started last night. So I hope the holidays are finding you all just in a wonderful place, headspace that you need to be in, right? Um, I, I found this picture. Once in a while, Hanukkah coincides with either Christmas or Thanksgiving. And I love it, especially if my grandees are here. So here's um, us lighting the candle. Actually, that's Lennox. I don't know. I was trying to figure out how old those kids are there, um, my grandchildren. But I just think it's so lovely to blend traditions, right, so that people can learn about other cultures, how they celebrate. Uh, we have, you know, Kwanzaa. We, there's so many. It's kind of like December's the high season where people can just celebrate who they are and what they believe in and all that good stuff. Okay, so um, yesterday... I couldn't, I couldn't get focused. I don't know if that ever happens to you people. Couldn't get focused. And so I finished my Liberty of London puzzle. Now, I will tell you at Thanksgiving, I started this with my buddy Dara. And um, <laughs> when she left, all that was left were like the really hard parts. But I did it. And, and Jerry, my son-in-law, usually saves me. He only put in one piece. Let me show you. These are not inexpensive puzzles. They're wood, um, and you can see the shapes on them are crazy. And if you go to the upper left-hand corner and then go down, you're looking at the outside. So there's the edge. So there's no such thing as putting the edge together first with this puzzle. You can see the snowflakes. You can see the bird. Um, I, I Just so much fun. So much fun. I'm hoping that Santa Claus brings me another one. And one of his elves ordered one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Yay. I'm glad you guys are getting your embroidery kits. Um, we're going to talk about the thread today, how to prep, and all that good stuff. But first, I want to show you um, Judy Mullen. Okay, I found this on her Facebook page, and I thought this was really, really clever. This is, um, she. those are her holiday pins. So she puts up this quilt, and then she puts the pins on it, and when she wants to wear a pin, she just grabs it off the quilt. Okay, clever. It's so funny. My mom wore pins all the time, and I think I've shared this before, but this little center one, heart, if my heart's on the outside, my mom's heart is on the inside, and my mom's heart was a pin, and I took it to the jewelers, and Lance put it together as one, and I asked her permission. I said, Mom, and she was already really kind of gone at that point. I said, Mom, I want to take your pin and put it inside my necklace, because I don't want to wear it as a pin. And she said to me, it's okay, one day you'll grow up. <laughs> Stupid little things that come to mind. So Judy, I'm so glad I found that. All right, and then here, this came this morning. Those who sew or quilt are funnier, better looking, and more charming than those who don't. According to a study we just made up, pass it on. <laughs> I'll vote for that. Just ask us. We'll tell you. So, okay, Mary Ann um, sent me this picture, and it was way too small, and so it, it wouldn't blow up. And so we went back and forth, and she got me this image uh, that she made this quilt. I love this quilt. And this takes it back to the set that we used in the... Um, basket quilt that we just finished. So, you know, even if you didn't make that basket quilt, I would keep in mind this set with the broken dishes because I just don't think you can beat this. This is spectacular. And it, it way back in the day, way back in the day, probably the second lecture I ever did was at the Modesto Quilt Guild. And sometimes I try and be funny and sometimes it's not so funny. Um, I was making fun of maple leaf quilts and, and how horrible the maple leaf block was. And especially the 12-inch maple leaf. Who needs it, right? Guess what their block of the month, what their exchange was that month? 12-inch <laughs> maple leaves. 
<laughs> they still talk to me to this day. <laughs> but I mean, look at this. This is stunning. Absolutely stunning. So I have been rebuked once again for casting judgment on a quilt block. All right. And the, oh, and then Mary, oh, Suzanne sent this. Okay. And uh, she came to the warehouse sale and was working on that scalloped border. And see, it, it shows up three times in that. That's this year's BOM. Um, feel free to do your own thing when you're doing somebody's kit or somebody's pattern, just like we're going to be doing here with, um, with our embroidery thing. So this is how I see this rolling because we are in the midst of the holidays. Today, we're going to get set up with everything you need. And then Wednesday, I'm going to do some very simple stitches. Uh, the group is descending on us, so I won't be back till next Wednesday, the Wednesday after. I'm sorry, you guys, but you know what? There's no way. There's just no way I could be here the 26th on Monday. And um, this Friday, they're coming. It's just, it's chaos, okay? So what I want to um, talk about is that some of you have, let me turn on my iron here. Okay, it's on. Some of you have ordered the kit, okay? And I'm gonna talk about how to handle the thread in the kit on how to store it in a moment. Some of you got the panel. We sell just the panels, all right? And some of you got the PDF download, which is what I was working from because there weren't any, um, any of the pre-printed yet. So I had to do it from this. Okay. The first thing I really strongly suggest you do is you go and you put, um, I got a fabric prep on top. It is, it's what I use for Dupiani and stuff like that. It's a very, very, very sheer stretchable stabilizer. So the fabric can move a little bit. It's not stiff. I've even hand quilted through this stuff and um, it's, it's, it's glorious, absolutely glorious. And I just realized I forgot something. I don't want to forget about showing you what that sent me. So it comes with, let me, it comes, you, you're going to have to trust me on this. It comes with um, bumps on one side, that's the fusible, smoothie on the other side. Now, you have a choice of marking your pattern if you don't have the pre-printed one before you press this on or after you press this on. But I want to talk about the hazards of choosing what pen to mark with, etc. So, the bumpies go down. I and this is for everybody, no matter, you know, if you got the kit or whatever. If you got the kit, there's um, a piece of this in there that fits. What you'll do is you'll put your iron on medium heat and just kind of press it down like this. If you're not sure which side is the bumpy, just press a little corner and if it sticks to your iron, you know, you know you're doing it wrong, right? But I'm just taking it easy. I'm, I'm melting the fuse into it. So why am I bothering with this? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, because I'm working with a pearl cotton, I really don't know. Oh, so you don't want that to happen. That's not good. Let's press down. Get you, if, you, if, you get, if you get going too fast, it's going to screw up on you. Trust me. So just like this. I think my iron. Then I'm going to see if it sticks. Now I could do a little bit better, but I'm going to turn it over now and do it from this side. Okay, you don't want any um, wrinkles in it, anything like that. Just press it down. Medium heat, no steam. All right. All right, that feels good. I like to start medium, and I can always make it a little bit hotter if I want. I've told you this before, but it bears repeating. All irons, all irons are not created the same. And I mean, even all irons, like this Panasonic that we sell in the store, parts are sourced in from all over. 
the place and the irons are put together. So let's say you went to the warehouse sale and you bought one of these Panasonics and then your friend was right behind you and they bought one of the Panasonics. You still have to go home and figure out the, the heat on it because they're all a little different. Start with medium, all right? So here we got this right here. All right, now we have to mark the pattern if you are doing not a pre-printed one. And I will tell you, I, I learned the hard way. So the first thing, where did that pen go? The first, the first, where'd my pen go? The first thing I did, which I thought was so clever because, okay, number one, let me start with this. I'm blathering. Don't use a number two pencil. Just don't. They have a very soft lead. And if you mark this thing, it is going to, um, you're going to smear it. All right. So don't use a number two school bus pencil. Although this is from a super quilt seminar of Ricky's, but don't use that. All right, John, yes? Is the panel 100% cotton? The panel is 100% cotton. All right. Now, the next thing that you might want to mark with that, that I use for quilting when I'm doing hand quilting is a silver pencil. There are many different brands on the market. Um, let's see, this one's by Rock Quilter's Choice. I think it's a Roxanne's. This is a barrel, Verithon. This is Quilter Silver Marking. If it says, I know, let's see, there's barrel, there's, it doesn't have to say quilter on it, but you just want a silver pencil. This seems to come out easily after the fact. Um, if it says Verithon, all it means is that the lid, it, lead is thinner than say an, aver than an average lead. That's all it means is that it's just a little bit thinner. I used to always said, say, get, you know, get the Verithin, but you know, honestly, I don't care. So the first one I did, <laughs> I marked it with my, um, here it is, my friction. Okay. I marked it with my friction. I did pre put on, I did put pre put on the stuff on the back and then marked it. And then all of a sudden I wanted to iron it and get it flat before I carried on. So what of course happened when I used the friction pen? Yep, it, it, it went bye-bye, okay? So then I had to go back and mark it with something else. So however, that said, when I did, oh, by the way, I think we have a dozen of these kits left, just an FYI. Um, that said, when I went to mark this one, I came up with another idea. I decided to use my um, ink, my disappearing ink self-erase marker. And what I did was I marked this first, and then I marked this in the little stems. And you know you got about 24 hours to do your thing. And then I stitched it, and then I would put the pattern back under it, and then I would stitch it again. I would draw, and then I would stitch it again. So let's talk about that. I do have a light box, and I absolutely adore my light box. I think I got it from Santa one year. I think both Ricky and I did. And it's flat. It's beautiful. It's lovely if you're into applique. I know we used to have them in the store. I don't know if we still do. But really, you don't need it for this, though I used it. This, when it prints out, of course, this is if you're marking your own thing, you can see through it. So what I did was I just, you know, marked the fruit stitched it, and then went and repositioned it, um, and then marked some more. And did it come out exactly verbatim as the pattern? No, because they're shifting and stuff. But, I mean, I am not going to complain about this at all. It's, it's beautiful, in my not-so-humble opinion. Okay, so let me see. What other what questions do I have here? Um, 25 yard, uh, Susan Skeel, yes, point, a quarter yard of the fabric plet prep is included. And Susan has been writing me, and we've been talking about all this embroidery stuff, and I'll get, I'll get specifically into stitches on, uh, Wednesday, Susan. Okay. Um, you could have put it in the freezer and the markings would have come back. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be flat. 
<laughs> I mean, it was so stupid. It was so stupid. So in the end, if I wanted to just mark it in a fell swoop, I would use a silver pencil. And if I didn't mind go and, and then if I didn't mind going bit by bit by bit, I would use this one. And the reason I would prefer to go bit by bit by bit is because if I miss the mark with this, you're going to be able to see it. Now, I know on some red work, red work projects, which we're not doing, they have you use a red a fine line pen, permanent. Mm -mm. I, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> and I don't even know why. Okay, and Darlene says you can use a brown thin Prisma pen. Okay, so now when you get your little packet from us, um, can we iron the pre-printed pre panel in the kit? Yeah, you can do that, Susan. No big deal. Okay. I say that with full confidence. Test a corner, <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> I haven't worked with one, but I'm sure. It's printed. Yes, of course, it's printed. It's printed just like how we had the little star fab the little square fabric made for the BOM this next year. All right, so I believe you get six colors in the kit. Um, maybe there were six, eight. Somebody tell me, how many pieces do you get in the kit? Again, I don't have a kit here. Um, and it comes like in the upper right, how in skeins like that. So you want to get it so that it's manageable, right? Uh, what, you, what I did was I, where can I get the PDF pattern? Um, it's on the website. Go to the store and you'll be able to find it. All right. So there that is. Then what I did is I took a juice glass. I undid the skein and I put it around it, okay? And then I started just wrapping it around the House of Embroidery card. But it was getting a little too full for me, so I ended up doing it on one card. Oh, gosh, that's so beautiful. Um, on, this, on the jewel tone, which we're out of, the two pinks on the right are kind of a lot the same, so there's very subtle, very subtle variations. But look at like the greens and the golds. Oh, I love this stuff. All right. Um, does TQS sell the thread that comes with the kit so I can add more embroidery in the panel? Um, no. So let me talk about that. We couldn't get oh, nine colors. Thank you, Carolyn. That's right. It was three and six. Um, we couldn't get more colors, um, which made... We got, we maxed them out, and we couldn't get more till February. So the idea was, do we want to uh, put this thing off, or do we want to get going? And I voted get going. So on the one that I added more, because I ran out of this stuff, too, um, I just went to my box of threads and just used different stuff. Now, oh, I've got, I, I, I've got a video I want to show you. I'm blathering on. I want you to meet Richard, the bald guy in the kilt and hear about this. This was taped about two or three months ago. Hey, Richard, bald guy in a kilt. How are you? I'm doing great. How's everything going? Absolutely beautifully. Now, you are in Wisconsin, in Madison, right? Yeah, we're at the Great Wisconsin Madison Quilt Show. Expo. <laughs> <laughs> want, you're getting yeah. you're bombed. I want yeah. people to bomb this, you. This has been actually one of the busiest shows this year. Oh, There are tons of people here. That's fabulous. Okay, so just to give everybody a little bit of background, we taped a show with Catherine Redford, and she's one of your, she's, she represents you very well, I guess I should say, right? She is one of our greatest assets. Yeah, we well, she, her work is beautiful. You said you have some of her pieces in there. Yeah, well, well let's see, let's see. Um, we have I'll see if we can see it. Um, that, that right Oh, the Dorset there, buttons. Yep. That is the one, like, we sent you the complete set. Uh-huh. all the colors up there. So, so I'll show people. On the show, we taped with her. I, it hasn't, I don't think it's aired yet. But look at this beautiful piece that she did. And then it's a little kit she gave me. And then she gave me these threads. And Richard, I, they are the most beautiful threads I've ever worked with. Yeah, we take pride in our threads, especially given the sourcing and the background of them. You know, the thing that, and we're going to talk about all this, the thing is, is that they stitch 
beautifully. Absolutely. Yeah, I, it, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's so beautiful. They, they're almost silken the way they flow through the fabric. I was going to use that. I, that's what I was going to use. And I thought, well, I don't know if I want to say that or not. Here's, here's another six pack. I mean, like coming into your store is like a, can't, it, it, it's dangerous. All right. Kid in the candy store. I know. I know. So tell us about this because these are not, this has a unique story that I think everybody should hear. Well, for the past 20 years, I've been working with projects across Africa. Uh, my mother, being an avid quilter and everything like that, her and her friends actually convinced me when I was doing it to, instead of bringing in finished goods and selling them like a traditional fair trade store, to focus on crafting supplies. And one thing led to another, and we met up with House of Embroidery from South Africa. And we've been working with them for seven, eight years now. And we have become their biggest distributor outside of their home office. And tell me about the people that work there and all that. You, it's, it, you're very proud that it's ethical trading. Yes. We, I believe that regardless of where we are, that employees, workers, everyone has to be paid living wages. And every group that we work with has to commit to that. And in doing that, like during COVID with the House of Embroidery, when they were shut down by the government, we were still paying salaries, even though we did not have to. And we were still making sure that, and, it, and so like doing things like that, we've got customers like big names, like Sue Spargo, Catherine, everyone like that, because of our philosophy on paying people what they are worth. But Richard, on top of it, the, 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 well, let's take a look at the people. I mean, okay, nobody's unhappy there. Yeah. If yeah. you treat the staff well, they are happy to work with you. Now, House of Embroidery has actually been around for 25 to 30 years. And there are original employees still there. The now, do you so you work with other companies too besides house of embroidery we work with vinnie's colors which is a yarn line out of south africa cotton and bamboo yarns we work with roseworks embroidery which is embroidery designs um m m crochet we're just finalizing an agreement to distribute her uh kits and stuff like that and then in North America, we do a lot of artisan direct or designer direct programming. And we, just a second, as I'm doing a live with Alex Anderson right now. Get her in working. there. Richard, get her, get, get, her. get that person in there. Yeah, Hi. She's, <laughs> she's, she's got, and she's actually picked the Roseworks embroidery that I just mentioned. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> So as soon as we're finished here, I'll be. I won't keep. Uh, I, I won't keep you long. Hey, Richard, what is the biggest surprise in working with these global communities? The biggest surprise, if we look at the history of like fair trade products, the they're, they're often associated with cheaply made, high price. The fact is, if you work. Uh, if you have standards and everything like that, we have some of the highest quality products at a competitive price. That is the biggest shocker that most people find with us. That our hand dyed threads from South Africa are priced similarly to any hand dyed thread product in North America. And again, people, they are just glorious. To, I, it took my breath away sewing with it actually on a wool quilt that Sue Spargo inspired me. <laughs> so there you go. Well, listen, I, I don't want, I, I don't want to keep you from getting, taking money. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> could we work out a deal so we could have it in the quilt show uh, store? Yep. Uh, Chris, while we have been talking, I've got another email from Kristen. We're working on that getting things going. I've been actively talking with her. And so by the time this airs, it, we could probably say, these have just launched in the store. 
That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So again, you know, okay, is Catherine coming back? No, she's not. She's visiting. She was only in for a couple of days and then she's off visiting her daughter. Okay, now if people, do you on your website, I should have looked before I asked you this, do you on your website have a list of the shows you're going to be at? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, we do. The website is? Globalartisans.shop. And I think I have here. Uh, I wonder if this is it. And it's in our newsletter every week, too. Okay. Oh, so we need to sign up for the newsletter. Yeah. And that image that you just put up, that we are uh, sponsoring a booth by Mapula Embroideries at Houston. Okay. So they have a display in Houston, and that is a topic for another day where yes. uh, we can talk about how we work with other groups in South Africa, because Mapula Embroideries is a very important group that we deal with and started dealing with through COVID. Love it. Love it. Well, listen, you have a great show. I don't know that you know this, but Wisconsin is my favorite state in the union. Yes, I can see why. I love the people. Love the people. Okay, darling, go, 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 uh, go ring the register. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank we'll you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So um, this is kind of, I hate doing pre-records way in advance, but for many, many reasons, this whole thing had to be extended till now. So um, uh, uh, what am I saying? Catherine Redford's show just ended, or it, right before Sheila Frampton Cooper's, okay? And her work is beautiful, those Dorset buttons she showed how to do. Mm-hmm, yep. And then um, Janice, Janie or Janice, um, you can order from a from us because we only have a couple kits left just the pre-printed panel we have that for sale and we can get more if you know people you know get into this but we did order a ton of those all right so we have that there for you too it's it's printed with a very light gray it, it's beautiful Kristen did a nice job getting that done so one last thing I wanted to share with you was I got a wonderful little um present from Pat, okay? And she sent me some hankies that are just a gas, um, but there was one in here. I'm hoping one of you might know the history of it or what even the lettering is and stuff. Okay, so let me get that out of the way. First of all, this is all handmade lace around the edge. It's just exquisite. Let me see if we can see that well. I believe we can. But there are all these characters on it that I honestly don't know what they are. I mean, I'm, I'm sh is it an alphabet? Is it? I don't know, but I've never seen anything like this in my life. Look at that handmade lace. It's just beautiful. So if any of you know what that is, I would really appreciate a shout out because I'd sure like to know uh, what uh, language or whatever it's representing. But the other thing she did, <coughs> excuse me, and this was, okay, we have TAPS plastics around us and you can go get shapes cut if you need templates, et cetera, et cetera. This is what she made for the basket handle placement. Now, I don't know how she got my name on it and all that, and that's so cool. I can't stand it, but this, this is great. And it even has the center mark line. And so it's not gonna, um, you can see it. I, I like that the printing is on it so that when you put it on the table, it doesn't go bye-bye. And so remember, if you're ever making something where you have to draw something over and over and over and over, you can go have little templates made. And it's not expensive. It's just so clever. Pat, thank you so much. That was so incredibly sweet. And it surprised me. I love surprises. So um, I don't have anybody saying here right now what it is. Okay. We will, we, me, myself, and I, sometimes we have great conversations. We'll be back Wednesday and we're going to get stitching. And I'm going to, this thread is absolutely flippin' exquisite. And there are some tricks so that it behaves better because it is hand-dyed, it is hand-spun. I mean, you're working with, you know, 
grandma's beautiful crystal glasses rather than a red solo cup, okay? So I'm going to tell you how to work with them. <laughs> so, okay, Eva, if that's Farsi, I am going to have a heart attack because my daughter-in-law, you know, is Israeli, but she's Persian and they all speak in Farsi and I'm going to see her in a couple days. That I, that, I hope it doesn't say something nasty, just saying. <laughs> All right. Um, I really appreciate you guys. I hope you're chilling into the season. Um, you know, whether, you know, no matter what you celebrate, you know, peace on earth. That's all I'm going to say. Peace on earth. See you Wednesday. Bye-bye.